Salutations, everyone! Welcome back to another Total Warhammer 3 guide. I'm Lord Formand, and today we'll be talking about 10 tips on how to play the Dark Elves better. Tip number one, their economy is all about slaves. And if you've played them at all, you will know this. However, it bears mentioning again that there are a variety of ways to get slaves. The most common one is through winning a battle and enslaving troops as well as sacking settlements. So the rough rule of thumb is that when you take a settlement, uh, if you want it, obviously loot and occupy will get you more slaves, although you have a public order problem. Sacking it will also get you slaves, but you won't get the province. Usually as the Dark Elves, unless you have a surplus of slaves, you're going to want to loot and occupy, mainly because the Dark Elf economy runs so heavily on slaves. If we were to pull up and we are going to pull up their basic income building here. You get 100 income for building it, but if you have 15 or more slaves, it doubles the income. This gets even more absurd as we move up here. This one, 150, 350 with 25 slaves, or this one, 200 with no slaves, which really hurts, but 500 with, a, with slaves. You can have an immense economy very quickly so long as you maintain slaves if you don't have slaves you have to default to a lesser income uh, slaves are also used for growth so having lots of slaves allow you to grow towards your larger settlements faster as well as do various other things so basically um get slaves you can get them from ports from battles from raiding from sacking from uh, looting and occupying you want to get as many slaves as you can almost all the time and in fact some legendary lords have blue line uh dreaded slavers which will get you even more which i highly recommend putting on them tip two the dark elves have amazing armor penetration on some of their advanced units so their default units outside of their default archers are non-armor penetrating which can hurt but later on stuff like the black guard of nagarond here they have armor piercing, and not only do they have armor piercing, they have a lot of armor piercing. This is relatively consistent if you look at some of the more advanced um, Dark Elf units. Obviously, their monster is already armor pen, but they have their shades, which are stronger elites. Archers and melee units have armor penetration. Obviously, the Nagarons does, but Harganeth Executioners are also armor pen. This allows the Dark Elves to go to the late game and fight evenly with anybody. Quick tip here for people playing like Mal Malakith and um, Malice Darkblade. Uh, you fight a lot of Chaos early on. Chaos is usually heavily armored um, if it's Warriors of Chaos, meaning you need armor penetration. If you're not fighting Chaos, Warriors of Chaos, just normal Chaos, they don't tend to have the most armor. Tip three, dark shards with shields are amazing early anti-range units. So your basic dark shard is very strong as is, but if you get it upgraded, um, which involves, I think, a level two barracks, you can get um, dark shards with shields. Now this combines the strength of normal dark shards, but now they have a shield to block returning ranged fire. In fact, they block 55% of all small arms fire from hitting them. This means in a one-on-one -on -one duel with pretty much any other archers early game, we're not talking elite archers, um, they will win the battle and they will win it with very few casualties. Now, of course, you have slightly less range, which can be improved through tech, but this is armor penetration with shield on an early um, ranged unit. It counts as a level 2 ranged unit, but it's arguably getting closer to level 3 if used properly. Use them in your armies, especially if you're fighting um, any faction with range. Um, it's a really easy way to stomp early high elf armies. Tip 4. Use combined arms armies. So the Dark Elves have one of the best well-rounded rosters of pretty much any faction in the game they have solid infantry they have solid cavalry they have pretty good missile infantry they've got amazing monsters and beasts they've got really good lords and heroes you can use their army to fight almost anyone else in the game without worrying too terribly if you're going to be absolutely countered by one of them in fact the, arguably their biggest weakness is um cavalry um but they do have some units to counter that what I mean by combined arms is you don't want to just build an army of 
pure infantry. You don't want to build an army of pure cavalry. You want to stack it. So you've got a solid, you've got some infantry, you've got some archers, you're backed up by cavalry, some monsters, maybe even uh, one of their weakest lines, which is their uh, weakest unit lines, which is their artillery. It's still pretty decent, as well as bringing plenty of lords and heroes. The Dark Elves have really good lords and heroes, so it's worth bringing them to the fight. Every single unit has its place. The only ones I might argue that don't have the world's greatest place in it is Leak Swords, but they do early on, um, as well as their early Dark Riders. You've got anti-armor, you've got killing units, you've got ranged units, you've got magic units, you've got flankers, you've got other ones. They all have their place. Some of them, like the um, Doomfire Warlocks, have abilities, so make sure you check that the unit you're using um, doesn't have an ability because if you're not using that ability and you're trying to use that unit, you're playing that unit very wrong. So read up on the units, figure out what they do. They by and large come with a description. If they have something like physical resistance, they're probably a lot stronger than they would appear stat wise. Tip five, use Hydras. Hydras are one of the monster units the Dark Elves have available to them. They absolutely can wreck most basic and even a good portion of advanced um, infantry and cav units because they have regeneration. Overall, in my experience with using them, my army will die, but the Hydras will still be alive. The biggest weakness the Hydras have is range units or fire because that stops their regeneration. But overall, if you're struggling to kill a lot of units effectively as the Dark Elves, get some Hydras, maybe even a Charybdis if you're fighting something like the Lizardmen because they're similar units, and just send them in in front or in the middle of your army. Their biggest weakness could be that their leadership could get low and they will rout. The odds are they will survive unless they're deliberately targeted by lords, heroes, or monster killer units. Um, but other than that, they will steamroll most anything else on the battlefield. They're very strong and they're relatively cheap to build and maintain. Tip six, use diktats to grow settlements quickly. So if you remember how I talked about how their economy is run by slaves, well, it also applies to their diktats here. In fact, they use more slaves. So Dark Elves have access to various diktats. The best one early on is this slave drive, which will add a wonderful 50 growth on like turn one or two or multiple turns. It's almost guaranteed early on to allow you to have high level settlements before anyone else can. Um, especially if you back it up by using um, residences here to get in faster growth as well. But really, the Diktat covers most of that. The downside is it uses lots of slaves, so don't throw it down everywhere. But in a settlement specifically like Nagaron, which you want to get to the higher level units because the Dark Elves thrive at high levels, you want to grow as fast as you can. Diktats provide the way to do it. If you do not use Diktats, you are missing a fundamental element of the Dark Elves, which is they get slaves and they use it to immense benefits. Since you can also convert them into money or into control, the reality is the growth is way more useful for most of the game. But you need slaves. So focus on getting slaves and use that, them on diktats in your economy. Tip seven, black arcs come back when killed, so use them aggressively. So most people can play the Dark Elves and never even get into Dark Arts unless you're playing the Corsair unit. But if you've got 800 slaves and you've got a port you can, and you've built a slave pen building, you can do the sacrifice to get you a Black Arc. A Black Arc is, of course, a unique lord, um, a dreadlord, I believe. And um, they will command the ship. They are very good at fighting the Dark Arcs kind of function like a horde type unit, but the most important thing for you to know is that if you lose one, you do not have to do another ritual to get it. They will come back. You can use them again. You should be using them aggressively, especially in areas where you don't have armies to raid and pillage for slaves. Port cities are particularly vulnerable to you. Just watch out a bit for the vampiric pirates. They can kind of ruin your day since they have advantages at fighting at sea. But don't fear losing or using black arcs. It's totally worth doing. It makes a world of difference to your economy, especially in terms of slave generation. 
So one of the hardest things for a lot of people to do as the Dark Elves might be to kill other lords and heroes. There's a simple answer to that. You have assassin units. Assassin units are a hero unit. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo, right here, Knight Assassin. They are extremely good at being lord and hero killers. And I'll explain why here. They have several different abilities they can spec into, one of which reduces attack and defense on an enemy lord or hero for 29 seconds, allowing other lords and heroes to kill them. They also can discourage a unit, which if it's used on a lord or hero, might make them run away, or they can massively boost their base weapon damage to do the damage themselves. They have a good range. They do strong missile strength with poison. They are virtually designed to kill other enemy lords so use them especially if you fight vampiric armies which rely so heavily on their lords and heroes to win one maybe even two canine assassins can absolutely wreck those lords at ranged or in melee combat just be aware that vampire units tend to heal tip nine and this is important very important to remember each dark elf lord plays extremely differently um, it's very hard to port your skills in building armies, economies, and playstyles with one into some of the others. Um, arguably, the two that are the most similar would be Malekith and Marathi, um, which makes some sense. However, there are differences. Malekith is your base one, is very good at what he does. Marathi has corruption, Slaneshi corruption. Helleborn needs slaves to sacrifice all the time. This guy is all about dark. Um, arcs. This guy is literally possessed by a demon and has to go on get slaves and money to afford to not go crazy. And this guy has an entire different roster of units where he can use monsters and fight in battle with them. So they each play very differently. They have different strengths, different weaknesses, obviously. So learn one and master it. Don't assume that learning the skills in one will be ported to the others easily. And finally, tip 10, Malice Darkblood himself can be an absolute one elf army. Um, one, people mis one big mistake people make with Malice, and they're always complaining, is he doesn't have a great economy. He doesn't have the world's greatest units. That's because he relies on so heavily on winning the battle himself. He can fight on his own, and he's a decent unit, but then he can be possessed by his demon and turn into an absolute monster of a unit. It's quite possible to kill 300 plus units with him and them not just being basic units, but more towards advanced. You get him the sword of Cain and he is an absolute one elf army. You can just send him into the army and so long as you're paying attention and turn into his demon form before he dies, you can wreck most lords, most heroes, most monsters with him. It's very fun to do. But that's the tip to Malice. Remember, he is a one elf army on his own, pretty much. And that is it for this guide. Hopefully it helped you. If it did, like, comment, subscribe, all those great stuff. I do longer videos, so there are longer ones for all these factions. And I really do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you got tips of your own, leave them below. But otherwise, I will see you on, in another guide or Let's Play. Bye for now.